Acts chapter 1, verse number 8. Acts chapter 1, verse number 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. All of God's people said amen. amen. You can be seated. Tell somebody, don't stop with the box. Don't stop with the box. Don't stop with the box. Um, Pentecost, although it is celebrated in the New Testament, is an Old Testament reference. It is after the Exodus. After the saving of Israel from Egypt by the blood, then he gives them Pentecost. After the Passover in, in Goshen, he brings them out. And then 50 days later, we believe it's 50 days. The, the Talmud and Jewish tradition would say it was on the 50th day. We know it's three months after the Exodus that... The Bible says Moses goes up on Sinai and comes down with tablets. So Pentecost comes with instructions. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor today, tell them today, God has given you instructions for what's next. Because many of us are open, right? We're open, but we're lacking strategy. We're open, but we're lacking information. And the Holy Spirit, which is the, the knowledge and the consciousness of God on the inside of us, comes with information. The omniscience of God. We get to tap into what he desires, sees and perceives for our lives. But the Bible says when he came down with the tablets. Because God took too long. They have began to build their own idol to worship. Be very careful that you don't get so anxious. And that you don't get so frustrated waiting on God that you start creating your own solutions. As a matter of fact, when Moses sees this, their response is, we put in the gold and the idol jumped out. But I want to tell you that the idol of your last season was not an accident. And you can't be delivered from it until you acknowledge it. That the monster that you're looking at is a monster you created. How? Where did they get the gold from to build an idol? It was the gold that God gave them when they came out of Egypt. It was the recompense for the loss of wages for the years they had suffered. And this is why you got to stay sober in this hour that you don't take what God gave you and make something else out of it. You're gifted, but your gift is not your idol. Don't make your gift your idol. Don't make what God gave you something you turn around and worship. It came with instructions. They were worshiping an idol. And the Bible said at that moment, they had to make a decision. So Pentecost is about instructions. And then Pentecost is about making decisions. Here's water. To anybody in here who haven't went down in the water. What hinders you from being baptized? It comes with instructions and then it comes with decisions. You have to make a decision. So it was already the idea of the Lord, the desire of the Lord, that the oldest of every household of Israel would be a priest. But the Bible says that when Moses comes down with the tablets, it was the Levites that made a decision to stand with Moses. 
when the Levites made that decision, the Lord says, I'm going to make you the priestly tribe. Hear me. What you do in this hour could shift the trajectory of your family for the next several generations. This, these decisions are bigger than us. Glory. Because many of us, come on, it's easy for us to believe in generational curses. I don't need a book on it. I don't know. A psychologist now calling it generational trauma. Call it whatever you want to call it. I'm going to tell you what it is. Somebody in my bloodline did something that I didn't choose. Although I didn't choose it, I found myself operating in it and I became what I hated. But if there is a, such a thing as a generational curse, there must be something called a generational blessing. And these blessings will come on you and overtake, oh, overtake you. You'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, and your children will be blessed, and your children's children will be blessed. See, so many of us think it's all about our destiny, but I'm trying to tell you this Pentecost is bigger than your destiny. This is about God's legacy that you're carrying. You are carrying something in the earth that's bigger than you. The Lord says the reason why some of your warfare has been so intense is because God is using you to reverse something. The reason why your warfare has been so hard because God is using you to recalibrate something. Somebody in your bloodline dropped the ball but I declare to you that the lot Matthews has fallen on you. I need you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor tell them I'm doing this for the whole house. I'm making decisions that's going to give my children a spiritual advantage more than a house, more than a car. I want to give them a legacy in the Holy Ghost. I want them to be able to choose Jesus without having to choose anything else. I'm trying to set them up that they won't have to fight the same demons that I fought. Glory be to God. So Pentecost is about instructions. Pentecost is about making a decision. And because some did not make the proper decision, they wanted to hold on to what they had created. 3,000 died. So at the first Pentecost, 3,000 died. How many died? The law comes, and when the law comes, 3,000 dies. And so now we're here in the New Testament. Where our Jewish Jesus, hallelujah, have sat with them in Passover. But this Passover is different because the lamb that's needed for Passover, he is. Hallelujah. He's the lamb of the Passover. He's the Passover lamb, the, the perfect spotless lamb. And the church of Jesus Christ, even to this day, we rise up and we celebrate the Passover. Some call it Easter, Easter. They call it different things. But the Passover, the, the resurrection, and we celebrate it. But sadly, so many in Christendom have left the church at Passover. Uh, yeah. Jesus died. Then he died. He died. He died. Then he died. But early Sunday morning, he got up. He got up with all power in his hand. The end. No, no. The story doesn't end at the resurrection. As a matter of fact, he doesn't go from the resurrection to the ascension. There's a space between the resurrection and the ascension. It's 40 days of him walking through walls. It's 40 days of him making fish sandwiches and passing them out to the disciples. It's 40 days he's saying, touch my hands. Put your hand in my side. 40 days of showing infallible proofs 
that this wasn't a magic trick. 40 days of proving to the people that I'm the same one that they rose up on that cross. I'm the same one they put up on Galgotha. They heard what I said, but they forgot what I said when he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw, I'm sorry, I feel the Holy Ghost, I'll draw all men unto me. You heard what I said, but you forgot what I said when I said destroy this temple. And in three days, I'll raise it up, but I'm not mad at you. He hung around for 40 days and they finally had him back. The one that they put all their hopes and expectations on, they finally had him back. And in their mind, having him back, never to lose him again. We disappointed you. We denied you. We weren't there for you. But now our eyes are on you and we'll never let you go. And at the end of 40 days, 40 days is a sign of a period, a duration, a cycle. And all things come to an end. Not a finale, but to restart another cycle. So at the end of 40 days, he says, I got to go away. Hallelujah. And he said, oh, no, 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 no. You did this before. Don't do this to us. He said, no, I, I got to go. He said, no, they said, no, don't leave us. He said, no, I'm going to pray the Father. And the pro- Father is going to send you an advocate. The, hey, glory be to God. A paraclete. The, the, the fa- I'm going to pray the Father. And he's going to send you another comforter. Now, listen what he says. You're going to know this comforter when he comes. Because this comforter has been with you the whole time. Now, now the world won't get it and the world will miss it because the world don't know him. Hallelujah. But you know him because he's been with you. And after this, not only will he be with you, but he will be in you and I will come to you. My See, this, this is the importance for me, for me to say this to somebody in this room. Although uh, most Protestants believe in sola scriptura, in, in other words, we believe in the authority of the scriptures, we have to consider that the whole church, the whole New Testament church, was birthed without a New Testament canon. Don't you get nervous on me in here. I believe in the authority of the scriptures. But we have people who have master scripture, but they don't know spirit. It's the Godhead is not Father, Son, Holy Bible. It's Father, Son, Holy Ghost. There are people who are acquainted with quoting scriptures, but they have no revelation. The Holy Spirit is not necessarily another person, but rather another expression of the same person. It's Jesus. I didn't. I said an expression. I didn't say a mode. I, an expression, because while he's on the inside of us, he never ceases to be what he already is and what he always, already has been and always will be. Jesus told them, "I'm going to pray to Father. He's going to send you an advocate, and I'm coming." <laughs> In other words, when I tell you that you need to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I'm not presenting you another gospel. Oh, I'm good. I don't need all of that. No, you don't need more of Jesus. How much Jesus can you have? No, when I say you need to experience the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I mean, do I really need that? Well, when you're in love with something or someone, how much of him do do you want? The, the, The Bible says this. It says, the Bible says they went to the upper room because some people stopped at Passover, but they didn't, they didn't make it to Pentecost. N- nice, nice messages. Nice chairs. Nice songs. <laughs> nice conferences. But they still at Passover. After 40 days, he says, he says, now don't y'all stand here grieving over me leaving go to Jerusalem and stay in Jerusalem until I endow you with power my goodness I told you Pentecost comes with instructions he appeared hear me to over 500 people 
Over 500 people heard the instruction, go to Jerusalem and tell her, I endow you with power. Over how many? Over 500 people. But when you get to Acts chapter 1, the Bible says there were 120 people in the upper room. That means 500 heard, but only 120 responded because there was the rest of them were still hung up on power. Passover and never made it to Pentecost but the gospel does not stop where he was resurrected the Holy Ghost comes on the inside of us. the work of Jesus Christ is still yet continuing in our lives and when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all in one place with one accord and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house and there appeared unto them cloven tongues as a fire and it set upon them, each of them and they began to speak with other tongues as the spirit glory be to God gave them gave them utterance and it was such a magnanimous move of God undeniable that the Bible says it started off as 120. But the Bible says 3,000 were added. When the law came, 3,000 died. But when the spirit came, 3,000 were added. For the letter killeth, but the spirit brings life. So I have some people to testify today because it comes with an experience. Now, if I'm sitting in this room today, well, I'm, I'm saying some stuff and, you, and you're not, some of you are not comfortable with hearing messages like this on Sunday morning. But I got to preach it to you on Sunday morning because you won't come on another day. Uh, it comes with an experience. Well, somebody say, well, how do I know whether I've experienced the baptism of the Holy Ghost? If that's a question, you haven't experienced it yet. No, no. Don't lie to me. If there's something else I'm supposed to have, don't lie to me just for the sake of my feelings and tell me I'm good. Because when I get to battle, I need to make sure I got the weapon and the bullets. Y'all need some, y'all, some of y'all need some better friends. Because the mere fact that they let they looked at you with that outfit on, not the one you got on today, but they looked at you with that outfit on, and they said, Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's that's real cute. Y'all know Shein don't the, the size on Shein don't fit the same size everywhere. Come on. Y'all know China sizes is not the same as American sizes. All of us are not ASOS fit. Come on. You need, you need somebody that's going to tell you that that's not going to work for you. Come on. You need some more. You need some more coverage. Hallelujah. Because of where you're going and the atmosphere you've been assigned to, you need more. Maybe somebody else don't need all of this. But for us who are dealing with demons and principalities and spiritual warfare, tell somebody, I need all of it. It comes with an experience. And your experience don't have to be my experience. I've heard people like me, you grew up in a traditional Pentecostal, classical Pentecostal background where we tarried. I still tarry. I ain't talking about tarry with other people. I still tarry with God. Me, I wait on him. I get him. I... Jesus, 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 Jesus. I know it's primitive, but sometimes I'm going through things in my heart, in my mind. I don't have the words for it. I don't have the language for it. So I just call on his name. But I've seen some people who did not come from my background and because they didn't come from a legalistic background of feeling like you got to be good enough for the Holy Ghost. When they actually heard, they said it was a gift and they said, oh, okay, it's a gift. I want that. 
And so their faith automatically. Do you realize church culture sometimes can damage your faith? I didn't say church. I said church culture. Depending on the culture you are a part of, they will make you feel like you've got to earn God. I could have never earned God. Oh, y'all, y'all done got tight on me because you got your white on today so you feel real holy. Come on, be honest. You can never earn. If you could earn God, God would have never had to come for you. And I've seen people not tarry long. I've seen people leave church and didn't receive it because the church service was distracting. And they went home and they got in their bedroom by themselves and the Lord baptized them. I've seen people roll across the floor and I've seen some people sit there with tears coming down their face and the Holy Spirit descending like a dove on them. I've seen the Russian mighty wind. I've seen people have demons cast out of them. And at the moment the demon came out, the Holy Ghost came in. I've, been seeing, I've watched people get the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues before they were baptized. And I've seen people get baptized in the water and come up out of the water speaking in tongues. Hear me. Don't make a monument out of the method. You ain't got a monopoly on God. Your tradition don't have a monopoly on God. Your denomination don't have. I don't need you to sign my certificate to say what I got. When you got an experience with God, can't nobody make you doubt it. You hear what I'm saying? I came to school in 2003 at Liberty University and I'll never forget. I was sitting in a class. I won't call the professor's name because he's still living. And I was sitting in the class and the professor got on the subject of speaking in tongue and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And he says, does anybody in here believe in that? And I looked around, I was like, um, me. Oh, he said, okay, have you ever spoken in tongues? I said, and everybody was looking at me. I was like, yeah, I actually have. And you have to realize it was an intimidating moment because these were people who were learned men. They had books and they had written books. But let me tell you something. I had something that I couldn't deny. I had an experience and I had to tell my professor I said listen I'm not putting you down you ask me did I believe in it now the only reason why hallelujah you says it doesn't exist is because you ain't never been there but those who've been there and got the stamp in their passport for it you can't make me down I know my feet have touched the shores of that sand well I can't deny what I've seen I can't deny what I heard and I everybody else is coming out of the closet while you sanctified people are trying to be politically correct but is there anybody in here you got the Holy Ghost and you are not ashamed you believe in this demon chasing burning lifting spirit of the living God I believed in it before I received it I believe it you need that experience our generation needs a genuine God experience not information information is good but after a while we become in a information intellectual war consistently and we're quoting back at each other what this one said and that one said and that becomes psychologically exhausting we need an experience they had an experience and it came, it came with this phenomena that we've been testifying about. It came with these tongues. <sighs> now you have to realize that Acts chapter 2 tongues were different. You hear me now? Acts chapter 2 was not heavenly language. Now come when I get out of the Bible, y'all stop me now. The Bible, they spoke languages of other men. Are these men, men of Galilee? And they're speaking our tongue. Other tongues. But then, Apostle Paul explains another phenomenon of the Holy Ghost that every believer can have. And that's the ability to pray in the spirit. And pray with the understanding. In other words, if I'm praying with the spirit and with the understanding, that means when I'm praying with the spirit, that means there's some things I don't understand. Well, should I do it if I don't understand it? Yes, because Romans chapter 8 says the spirit is praying the will of God. It's another level of trust. 
See, y'all don't want to pray in the Holy Ghost. Look at y'all. Y'all don't want to pray in the Holy Ghost. You want to be able to control the narrative and tell God what to do. You need to pray in English and in tongues. You need to say, Lord, this is who I want to marry, and I want you to fix it that that's who I marry. And then you need to speak in tongues just in case the Holy Ghost is saying, break that up. That's not what they need. Come on. Oh, y'all don't. <laughs> you need to pray in your language, and you need to pray in his language. Because you need to trust God to cancel out what you said that wasn't his will. I speak in tongues all the time. I do. I do. All the time. I get up in the morning praying in tongues. This ain't nothing I conjure up when I get here. I pray in tongues all the time. Now, I know some of y'all looking at me like, mm, excuse me? Yeah, I'm going to say, say like Paul says. I speak in tongues more than you all. Except Elder Lois. So Elder, Elder Lois. <laughs> I sure do. But let me tell you something. I don't pray in tongues all the time because I'm so spiritual. I don't pray in tongues all the time because I'm so much better than you. I pray in tongues all the time because... Me in comparison to this assignment, I am, oh Lord, this is going to be a little too honest for some of y'all, but I'm going to say this. I am so weak. Oh, maybe you got it twisted. Oh, you thought the tongues was my badge of honor. You thought your tongues because you from the 10th realm of the Holy Ghost and you didn't ascend it. No, 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 no. God ain't going to give you a sign for a show. We are not a side show. This is not a performance. If it don't do nothing, we don't need it. Come on. We don't need jewelry that just shines. And come. We need something that will help me produce. The Bible says we pray in the Holy Ghost because it helps our infirmities. The only people that need to be able to pray in the Holy Ghost are people who have weaknesses. If you don't have no weaknesses, you don't need to pray in the Holy Ghost. If your faith ain't never challenged, you don't need to pray in the Holy Ghost. But the Bible says after your faith is torn down, build it up. How do you do it? Praying in the Holy Ghost. I've been announcing to y'all. I've been announcing to y'all. I said, y'all, we're going to build that homeless shelter. We're going to have a homeless shelter. We're going to raise money. We're going to open up that homeless shelter. I drove all the way from D.C. the other day for a meeting at the church for the homeless shelter just for the man to look at me and says, well, if you have a homeless shelter here, you're going to have to build a, a sprinkler system in this whole building. I said, well, how much is that going to cost? He said, let me tell you. A bigger number than I can give you. I'll give you somebody to come out here and look at. I had a moment. I got in the back of that Sprinter. After then, came all the way down here from D.C. for a meeting and said, you need a whole lot more money than, than I can tell you the number right now. After I done stood in faith saying, we're going to do this homeless shelter. We're going to do this homeless shelter. I got in the Sprinter. I didn't call my mother first. I didn't call nobody. I got in that sprinter and I felt my faith for homeless shelter leaving. Can I be honest with y'all? I felt my faith saying, hold on, maybe we were going to do it. Where this money coming from? I don't want the pressure of this. I don't want the expectation. I don't want the potential failure. Hold on, what happened to that faith that I had standing on the platform saying, we don't have a homeless shelter. I got some news that attacked my faith. So what I did when I got in that sprint, I said, See, he said, They're going to be times in your life you're going to have to go to the bathroom while you're at work and go in that stall and lock it. Make sure ain't nobody else on the left and the right. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, when your faith starts slipping, Start praying. Start praying. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy When your past temptations that you knew you had conquered from the past, when you feel those temptations trying to lure you back to pornography, trying to lure you back in adultery, trying to pull you back into fornication, you got to lay hands on your own head and start praying in the Holy Ghost. You need something more than a prayer journal. You need something more than a devotional book. You need something that you download out of the high place. Oh! 
he comes with with an experience but uh but i want to say to you don't stop with the box if you ain't never spoken tongues today today is the day you're gonna speak in tongues if you ain't Oh, no, no, no. You ain't gonna have to fight for it. It's a gift. You're gonna receive it today. Now, if you want it, now he ain't gonna force a gift on you. If you want it, he's gonna, he's gonna give it to you today. Now, if you're still trying to get it here, no, no, you don't receive it here. You receive it here. <laughs> you, I, I'm not telling you you have to ban, abandon intellectualism, but you have to abandon the desire to control. You don't get to control this. You let this control you. You let the hope. We're going to have an experience. We've already had an experience all day today. But I want to say this to you. The tongues. This experience. Is the box. It's the box. Don't stop with the box. Don't, don't bring Pentecostal experience all the way down to speaking in tongues. Hear me? It's a sign. It's the rapping. It's the box. Don't, don't say, oh, y'all Pentecost. Oh, yeah, we Pentecostal because you know we dance. Don't minimize a Pentecostal experience to a dance. And I'm not telling you to dismiss it. Yes, you're going to dance. If you want to dance, he ain't going to make you dance. But if you want to dance, the Holy Ghost will get up under you. He'll, he'll make you cry. But, but crying is not change. Repentance is. Stop with the box. The reason, the way I got this message topic was, I remember going all over trying to get a gift for a child. I mean, I got that gift for that child for like a one year old's birthday, and I gave them the gift. They were playing with the paper. And I'm like, look at the toy. Look what I went through. That's what I went through to get you. That's, that's what I paid the high price for was what's in the box, not the wrapping. And many of us have stopped at the box. I've had an experience, but he says after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, I ain't giving, I'm giving you more than a box. I'm giving you more than tongues. I'm giving you more than a dance. I am giving you power. And what does that power look like? What does that power look like? That power looks like people who were timid. Hiding from the Sanhedrin and Roman soldiers. And all of a sudden now they're standing in the city square. And say ye men of Jerusalem. The same Jesus that you crucify as now both Lord and Christ. The same people, the same man that says, I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know him. Now he's standing up and says, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of the one you just crucified. See, when you really get the Holy Ghost, there's a level of boldness that comes with you. Mm. Hey, when you get the Holy Ghost, don't stop with the box. Come back to the altar if you got tongues, but nothing in you changed. Uh oh, I didn't lost the church right there. No, no, no. If you had an experience, but that thing ain't ain't took. Yeah, yeah. Do y'all understand that language? I know that was like a little Southern Gretna, Virginia vernacular. But if you had an experience and ain't took, you stay in it. 
you stay on the altar. I, I do thank God for the older saints that when we had a good experience and they said, oh no, you ain't finished, honey. Come on back. Come on. Hey, hallelujah. Because you don't come off this altar and speak in tongue and then cuss within 24 hours. No, 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 no. You, you, don't, you don't speak in tongues and then you be mean as a rattlesnake. Come on. No, 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 no. This kind of Holy Ghost will go with you to your house. It will make you love people. See, y'all made the fruit of the Spirit good moral character. No, 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 no. There are people who are already kind. They got love. They got goodness. They're patient. That don't mean they have the Holy Ghost. The fruit of the Holy Ghost is not regular kindness. It's supernatural kindness. It's supernatural gentleness. It's supernatural love. In other words, you can be in a tense atmosphere. You can be in an intimidating atmosphere and an atmosphere where you would have reacted differently all of a sudden the law of kindness start coming out of your mouth you start speaking gentle in a situation that you would have got ratchet in y'all talk to me in this room it's the holy ghost that will cause you to love people who hate your guts the bible says even the world love their own don't stop with the box pull out the fruit don't stop with the box hear me listen ramp church listen mother church hear me don't stop with the sign get out the gifts get out the gifts because some of you in this room I see the office of the prophet on you I see the gifts of the spirit, the gift of the word of knowledge and the good of, gift of the word of wisdom I see the gift of healing and the gift of faith but if you just get caught up in the rap and you go, ooh, yes, Lord. Oh, God. I tell y'all, God just blessed me on Sunday. Oh, the Holy Ghost just came all of me. Oh, the Holy Ghost did it for me. The Holy Ghost touched me. For what? At some point, all of that got to be transferred to something. If you just come and get in a good shout and good time, at some point, you got to funnel all of that you feel in here to be an evangelist at your job. For what? Why did God? Now you got to get a revelation. Why did he fill me with the Holy Ghost? After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall have power. Put the scripture on the screen. What? What? Why did he give it to you? He didn't give it to you to make you feel special. He didn't give it to you to make you feel like you're better than somebody. He says, after the Holy Ghost has come, I'm going to give you power. For what? To witness. To witness. To, to witness. So what, what is all this for? If you just stop with rapping. Get, out, get the rest of it out the box. Now, no, no, I, I just told you y'all got gifts. Don't come and grab. This is my microphone. No, no, really. The media, the media team told me. They said, this is yours. We set it right there. So this one is mine. All right? Where is yours? Where is yours? Where your microphone? Where is your platform? Why did God fill you with Holy Ghost? So that means you got to take all of this in this atmosphere and get drunk in it. Drink all of it you can. Drink all of it you can. And after you drink all you can, then you sober up. And you stand in it. And you go to that woman that's at the admissions office. Or the woman that in, works in the office at the apartment complex. And you look at her and says, hey, do you have a daughter? Uh, actually, I do. Why? Well, last night I had a dream. Now, I don't need you going in there going like this. No, you do that in here, all right? You sober up. And you stand up in that thing. And you tell that woman at the Walmart counter, say, hey, I see you got a brace on your arm. Can I pray for you? Instead of getting an attitude because somebody is not giving you eye contact and they're being rude. You operate in the gift of discernment. And say, so, oh no, something else is going on here. Ha, no, 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 I'm going to tell y'all, I've had some great God experiences in church. But some of my greatest experiences happened outside of the temple. The day of Pentecost was not in the temple. I said the day of Pentecost was not in the temple. It was noise abroad. And the people were attracted to the sound. 
You need this experience. But don't stop with the box. Y'all stay. There's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, Ye shall have power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you will be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. The whole point of this YouTube channel, or however you're watching this message, is to be a witness of Jesus. It's to reveal Jesus to people in a deeper, wider, and greater way. So I pray that some kind of way through this message today, Jesus has been revealed to you in a deeper way. Uh, I wanna pray for you. Lord, I just ask you right now, for those who are watching, to those who are listening to my voice, I'm asking you by your spirit to touch them right where they are. Someone is at a crossroad in their life and they need direction. And I'm asking you, Lord, be their navigation. Because to a million questions, Lord, you are the answer. And so I'm asking you, Lord, by your spirit to shut every door you don't want them to go into, but only to grant them access to divine doors. Lord, someone may be listening and they're sick in their body. And Lord, your word says, by your stripes we're healed. And so, Lord, right now I speak your healing name, Jesus, over their physical body, over their mind, and over their heart. Lord, if there's someone that's watching, that don't know you in the pardoning of their sins, I'm asking you now, let them cry out your name. Let them say, Lord, save me. And I'm asking you, Lord, as you are so willing to do, meet them right where they are. I thank you, Father, before we touch it, before we experience it, before we see with our eyes, we thank you that we already have what we have prayed for. And I speak these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you are blessed today, you like to communicate with us because we love getting your emails. We love getting your letters. Take time to send us one right now. Pastor at the rampchurch.org. Or you can send us a letter at 701 Thomas Road, Lynchburg, Virginia, 24502. Our ministry has been expanding. And yes, by the power of God, but also by your partnering. You have been partnering with God. Some of you have been sowing seeds. You've been giving offerings. And so if today, if you would like to sow a seed to continue to bless our ministry, to partner with what we're doing domestically and all around the world, take time. There are ways to give on the screen. And remember, you know, whatever you sow, you'll reap. But don't just always give to get. Give because you're able to give. You've been blessed to give. Let God trust you to be a resource. This is Bishop S.Y. Younger, and I look forward to connecting with you soon. Go with God because he's always going with you.